Hello everyone and welcome to Azam Sharp Weekly. And in this video, you're going to learn how to create a tags view. Basically, we'll display a list of tags and we will allow you to select multiple tags. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a separate view. I'm just gonna call it tags view. But you can obviously call this anything you want. And the reason that I'm implementing Tags View is in one of the apps that I'm designing, I am using a similar Tags View to select multiple things. Now, what kind of tags should we have? So again, it depends, right? I mean, what kind of tags do you need? So let's go ahead and see what kind of tags we can get over here, all right? So let me go ahead and copy some tags. And we're just going to create some common tags over here. There we go. All right. So now we have some common tags over here. And what we want to do is go through these tags and create some sort of a user interface. Now, since there are a lot of tags, I'm just going to use a scroll view. And I'm just also going to make sure that the scroll view is scrolling horizontal. And we don't really want to show the indicators, so we'll set it to false. Now, inside the scroll view, I'll add a X tag because I want it to flow horizontally. And now I can go through all of these tags. So I'll say common tags. And self is fine in this case, it's hashable. All of these are string anyways. We'll get the tag. And now we can simply display the tag, simply tag, that's it. And we should be able to see these tags. Now, currently you can see that the tags view does not really have any preview, but we can easily create a preview. I'm just gonna go ahead and say preview macro. And I don't think I need all of that stuff. Preview is something like that, that's perfectly fine. And I can simply say tags view. So this is going to allow us to create a preview and you can already see the preview over here it is getting displayed. Now, although these things are getting displayed and they are scrollable, but we can make them a little bit better. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, let's go and add a bit of a padding so that they have a breathing room. I'm also going to go ahead and add some sort of a background color so that they look nice. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say background color. And let's start with gray, which means that they are not really selected at this point. I'm also going to uh, make rounded borders, rounded corners, so we can use clip shape. And now they're looking much better. And on the edge stack, I can change the foreground color or the foreground style to be white. So we'll have the white color, there we go. Okay, it's looking pretty good. Um, let's see how we can display it in our content view. Well, we'll simply go ahead and say tags view. And that's pretty much it. Now it's gonna display on the content view. Let's go ahead and take out this line. Okay, both of them working pretty good. All right, great. Now, I wonder if we can actually pass something over here, like a name or something. It doesn't really show which view I'm using. Oh, there we go, it actually did change, sorry. There we go, content view. So I know that this one is the content view now. So I can see these things, that's great. But what about selecting a particular tag? Tag. If I go ahead and click on any of these tags, nothing really happens. So what I'm going to do is, I want to select the tags, but whenever you select a tag, the parent who is using these tags, which in this case will be the content view, should get that updated, like the collection of selected tags. So in the content view, I can go ahead and create a state variable. And we can even name this selected tags or just tags if you want to, that's fine, selected tags. And that will be an array, or you can just mark it as a set if you want. You can use an array, you can use a set. Now in an actual application that I was working on, I used a set uh, because I was also using uh, core data, so set kind of goes nicely with core data relationships. So you can use a set in this case, you can use you know anything you want. 
And in the tags view, we need to pass this selected tags in the tags view so that the tags view can update the selected tags array and add the tags to the selected tags array. So I'm going to use a binding. And the reason that I'm using binding over here in the tags view is because whenever you will set a tag right over here, whenever you're going to set the tag, it is going to tell the content view that, hey, some tags have been added, so you may want to re-render yourself. Now, over here, you can see that it's complaining right here. It's complaining actually in multiple places. So let's go ahead and fix the content view by passing in the binding for the selected tags. So that's going to fix that problem. But how do we work with the preview? I mean, in the preview, if I want to pass in selected tags, how do I pass in the selected tag? I don't really have anything over here. Now, you can obviously go ahead and pass a constant value, but obviously in this case, it's not really going to do anything because you're passing a constant. So this will be a great place to introduce something called a container view. So what we're going to do is we are going to create a container view. We'll call it uh, tags view container. And the whole purpose of this particular container view is simply to provide some sort of a state variable so that we can use it in our preview. So I'll create this over here. And now I can simply go ahead and call tags view, passing in the selected tags. And instead of previewing to tags view, we are going to go ahead and preview the tags view container. There we go. Now you might be wondering, why did we even bother doing that? We were working on the content view. We should have just used the content view. And that's perfectly fine if you want to do that. Sometimes we are spending a lot more time in the tags view. So we do want to preview it without needing to inject it into the content view or some other parent view. In those cases, you can always use a container view to wrap the tags view, okay? Now, the next thing that we want to do is adding the on tap gesture. So let's go ahead and add on tap gesture on the text itself. This means that when you are going to tap on the particular option over here, uh, let's go ahead and also check out the preview. Is it working or not? Okay, it's working perfectly fine. So that's the actual preview for our text view container. So when we tap on a particular text, we want to check that if the selected tags dot contains the tag, the one that you just selected, if it if you don't, then selected tags dot remove. If it contains, then you'd go ahead and remove the tag. All right, and if it doesn't, well, then in that case, you will simply insert the tag. So it makes it very simple when you're using a set that you can easily remove and you can easily insert. Now, based on the status of whether the tag is selected or not, we can change the color. So we can say over here, selected tags dot contains a tag. If it does, then this means that it is selected, so we're going to use a blue color, or else we're just going to use a default gray color. Now let's go ahead and see. Wow, so you can already see it's working really nicely. I can select multiple tags and I can also unselect them. Because when I add or tap on health, that is added to the selected tags. When I touch it again, when I tap on it again, since it already contains the tag, it's going to remove the tag, okay? So this is pretty cool. Looks like it's working really nicely. Now, if I go to the content view, it's gonna work exactly like that. Whenever we are selecting the tags, the selected tags is getting updated. And once you're done, well, you have all the selected tags inside over here, all right? Now, if you want to see the selected tags, let me actually show you. We can actually wrap this in a, you can simply print it out if you want to. Um, I mean, there are many different ways of printing these things out, but we can always go ahead and print out these things. So I can go ahead and say selected tags, and we can simply print it out. So you can see it in your 
output or console window that what exactly is being printed out. So let's see that when we select a tag, what happens? If I select food, oops, it's not really printing it out right now. Uh, let's see what's going on over here. Let's go ahead and run this. And we're trying to print out the selected tag. Is it uh, this one? Okay, I thought it's going to print out. Maybe I'm missing something over here. Um, let's go ahead and say on change. And there we go. And on change, whenever the selected tags change, go ahead and print out the value of the selected tags. We just want to see that what tags are being printed out. Oh, maybe this is because I'm using a different preview. So I think we were doing it correctly. And there we go. You can see they are actually being printed out. But the reason that uh, they were not being printed is because I was using the content view instead of this one. So, But we can actually see that whenever we select a particular tag, you can see that so nice to see that they're printing out. Health, groceries, health, groceries at the end right there. And I can also go ahead and say health and groceries. I can take it out. Utilities, groceries, all of that. So it's pretty cool. You can easily, you can see that how easily you can make uh, the tag selection and also multiple tag selection. So that's always fun to see that how easy Swift UI makes everything for you. So there you have it. Make sure to download the code. And if you like this video, please make sure to subscribe. And uh, you can check out also my courses on Udemy. Uh, let me actually talk a little bit about my courses. So here's my website, azamsharp.com, and there is a link to the deals. And there is a deal going on for the Black Friday sale or early Black Friday sale. And you can see that all of these courses that you see right now, they are on sale. I mean, these are a lot of courses, including combined framework course. So if I open up this course, you will be able to see uh, it is only $9.99. It's going to be like that for at least three days. So make sure that you get these courses. Uh, these are some amazing courses. If you are learning about how to build Swift UI application, you may want to check out my course on MV design pattern. There are, you can see there are like what? Close to like 1,500 students. Again, only $9.99. This is like 88% off. So this is a great steal, uh, but make sure you check out my courses. And I always have some new courses coming out, even on Surf Data. You can see the Surf Data course with 700 something students, great rating. Uh, again, 9.99, that's the best price available. All right, so check out my courses and uh, thank you so much and see you in the future.